we are covering driven AC circuits last time. Driven part is important because when you are dealing with a driven AC circuit, you are dealing with a voltage source that's time dependent, like the one you see here. We'll use this setup to, uh, for some demos later today. So um, these are the three circuits that we are looking at last time with the driven AC source. Let me just sketch them. And there's a reason I can simply write this down um, without doing any, any of the calculus. And this was the intent last time, which um, because it was so rushed, we didn't spend a lot of time. The, what I wanted to do last time was with the comparison of these terms that I'm boxing, that you would get from going through calculus to highlight that there's something useful that comes out of this treatment of the driven AC circuit using complex exponential. That you get a, um, um, you, you, you obtain a quantity, which is, a uh, which is an actually, it's an imaginary quantity if you are dealing with inductor or capacitor, or if you want to include the registers, then it's actually a complex quantity. This is a quantity that could be real, imaginary, or maybe even combination of both. Because when you look at this, so when you look at R1 plus R2, what you would have said is that this is the equivalent resistance of the register plus the other register in series, right? And in a similar way, you would say this is something that's similar to an equivalent resistance of these two circuit elements in series. The difference here is that this is a complex number. It has real part and it has an imaginary part. Yeah. So, um, so I think this is really where we left off last time. Uh, I ideally should have had time to introduce complex impedance but we sort of abruptly left. We got as far as this, and then you guys at least got to sh um, see the, the um, um, similarity between the expressions, and um, you, you got to see at least this far of the expression, i omega l and one over i omega c. That actually should be in your notes. And that, can, that, uh, that occurs in a place in an equation where it can be compared with R2. So the intuition that we are trying to build up there is that this is a quantity that behaves like resistance. Okay. So let me um, actually introduce the term that your textbook does use, um, except, you know, um, the, your textbook doesn't say the word complex. So this is the phrase we use to, so this resistance like a quantity. So we are trying to generalize resistance. So, um, so what is really nice about resistance is that uh, we call back to, you know, but like two months ago, when we introduced the resistance. So this is how resistance was introduced, right, in Ohm's law. And one of the surprising thing about Ohm's law, by the way, with the quotation mark around the law, is just how simple it looks. It says, you know, resistance is voltage over current, or it disestablishes this uh, remarkably simple relationship. Um, it establishes this relationship that voltage is equal to resistance times current. That voltage and current are linearly related to each other. They are simply proportional to each other. And what we have lost since then with the introduction of inductors and capacitors is that simple relationship because we have now introduced the calculus. Um, 
into what used to be simple linear algebraic relationship, um, into what used to be simple algebraic relationship, we have introduced things that must involve calculus. And same thing here, it doesn't look calculus-y, except the only way to relate current and um, charges to say current is dq dt. So, so you know, the, we had a simple relationship that got ruined. And what we, the new concept we are introducing now is the attempt to restore the old simple picture. So, um, so this is uh, this is the the idea or the motivation behind introducing something called impedance. It uh, so intuitively what it is. It's a generalized generalized idea of resistance. Whereas resistance will apply only to well registers, impedance can be used to describe property, characteristic of registers, inductors, and capacitors. And um, the way I, I teach this section of the class, I am always going to call this complex impedance because um, impedance is a complex number. In your textbook, they will try to cover this with the phasers. So in a phasor diagram, this is a diagram that you might find in your textbook. The phasor diagram in your textbook might look like, uh, like impedance phasor will look something like you have x and y axis, and they will tell you that impedance for, Impedance for register looks something like this. This is the impedance for register. Impedance for inductor looks something like this uh, with the length omega L. And impedance for capacitor looks something like this with the length one over um, o omega C. I mean, you can do it that way. But as I was trying to uh, say as we are rushing through last time, um, all of this is really very contrived way to describe something that is naturally described as a complex number. If you in describe impedance as a complex number, then this x-axis, all it is is nothing more than the real axis of complex plane. Y-axis, all it is is nothing more than the imaginary axis of complex plane. And all these can be described by a single complex number where the impedance of register is simply R, and impedance of inductor is, so you know, it has this uh, um, omega L in the imaginary component, so that would be I omega L. Um, the capacitor, it has imaginary component in the negative, um, negative direction, so minus I over omega C, or one over omega, I omega C. So, so let me write down these uh, complex impedance uh, formulas that I will justify at least uh, using this example in detail because I think that was the one of the yeah, things that we lost. So these are complex impedances. Uh, for the complex impedance, we are going to use the letter G. Um, don't know why, it's a standard symbol. And I'm just going to write down the squiggly on top when needed to indicate that this is a complex number the way we handle it. So um, impedances can be used to describe registers, inductors, and capacitors. So with the registers, um, it's uh, you know, talking about impedance of register. Well, it's just resistance. It's just the, the old idea of resistance is folded in as a special case of an impedance. So impedance of a register. Um, impedance of a register, uh, this time I'm going to write down squiggly line because it's a real number, that's simply the resistance. So uh, nothing new there. What is new is what I'm going to describe as impedance of an inductor. So impedance of an um, inductor, L, is going to be I 
omega L. So it's the a quantity that's uh, like resistance um, in many different aspects. You know, quantity that is like resistance in many different aspects that uh, we are now going to properly give it a name, call it impedance, and this is a complex number. And we'll see how that works, uh, works out in our calculation. And um, uh, for capacitor, the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over i omega c. And I guess it, it, um, normally you would just memorize this as the formula for impedance. Um, you can drive them. Um, the, you can drive them. To drive it, uh, you would go through this calculation that we went through last time. When you go through the calculation, you identify this term, which if you could call it resistance, everything would work out so nicely. So you call it impedance. And identify this with the impedance of inductor. And identify this with the impedance of capacitor. So we did this introduction of impedance. This is what we can now say. And this is the whole reason for introducing impedance. So we had this beautifully simple relationship before that got ruined by introduction of all these time-dependent circuit components. Now we are going to restore that old, beautiful relationship again. We are going to now be able to say we do these impedances is that voltage as a function of time, as a complex quantity, is equal to the impedance, which is a constant. Uh, it can be imaginary real complex. If we have uh, two circuit elements in series, you can get complex impedance. So voltage will be impedance times current as a function of time. So this is a relationship. This linear relationship is what we are trying to restore. And that is the motivation for introducing this idea of impedance. 